it's a real contest. The two main parties have got stuck around 30%. There's a 60% chance of a, of a hung parliament. You've got a lot of parties uh, in this equation. The turnout has declined and the, uh, the sort of two-party system has declined. I think we may be moving to an era where we do politics without political parties. Voters are more inspired by values than they are by tribal loyalty. Britain's political leaders fanned out in force on this, the first business day of general election year. If it all looked a bit stale already, that's because many voters seem to be falling out of love with the old way of doing politics. It was all very different 25 years ago when Sky News began. Of course, the personalities have changed, but back then, people still thought in terms of a Labour or a Conservative government. Thank Some you very much. Not, not a coalition. Back in 1990, this building, now the TV company's base near Parliament, was newly renovated and opened officially by Margaret Thatcher. So this was where the victory party was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be, yeah. Neil Kinnock was one of its first occupants, making this Labour's flashy campaign headquarters for his 1992 general election battle against John Major's Conservatives. <laughs> Many expected Neil Kinnock to become Prime Minister in 1992, including perhaps himself, judging from his triumphalist rally in Sheffield. We're all right! We're all right! <laughs> we better get some talking done here, serious talk. A completely innocent effort to keep, get everybody to cool down. I did what rock and roll musicians do and said, we're all right. And they all shouted back. And then, so I responded to them, and they all shouted back, and I said, we'd better get a bit of talking done here. And it all cooled down. But of course, again, in mythology, that's developed into uh, an incoherent... Uh, 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 all, well, the phrase that's reported, or has been reported by some, is, we are all right, which was triumphalism, which, of course, I didn't say. Back then, politics was dominated by the battle between left and right, Labour versus Conservatives, with the newspapers taking a brutally partisan approach to Kinnock. It was meant to rally the faithful, galvanise the troops in the north. Uh, hindsight's a great general. If they'd won, of course, everyone would have said it was brilliant. But by that time, I suspect some of them were beginning to think they wouldn't win. And by election day, I'm pretty sure Neil Kinnock thought he wasn't going to make it either. Which particular job would you like, sir? Michael Portillo was then one of the rising stars on the right of the Conservative Party. The election result in 92 was very uncertain. Consequently, the turnout in that election was enormous. Uh, and the Conservatives, I think rather against expectations, got a very large slug of that enormous vote and were returned. Does anybody know any difference between the Liberals and the Labour Party in policy? No. John Major appeared to be in touch. He, he did this uh, gimmicky thing of getting on a soapbox and going around the country. There didn't seem to be much else that he could play on. But John Major was a man who had uh, humble origins. These were well known. And when he got there, out there amongst the people in m marketplaces and so on, I think that did have a very strong appeal. Major's government soon ran into trouble. Today has been an extremely difficult and turbulent day. The pound crashed out of the European exchange rate mechanism, undermining his credibility, including with many on his own side. Meanwhile, Labour regrouped in opposition. In the dawn of the 2nd of May 1997, the victorious party gathered here at the Festival Hall on London's South Bank. A new dawn has broken, has it not? But where was the famous scene? It was, it was just, uh, it was about here. Dame Tessa Jowl was one of the so-called Blair Babes. Everybody thinks that Tony waited to arrive until dawn had broken, and he probably did. Um, but it was exquisite. And the excitement was just 
I think we allowed ourselves to feel thrilled um, instead of, you know, all this caution that had been our hallmark for uh, two or three years since uh, Tony became leader. Um, but then, of course, that lasted for about 12 hours until we all woke up the next morning and realised uh, that we were going to be part of the government. Tony Blair went on to win big twice more in 2001 and 2005. But Blair was devoured in a power struggle with his Chancellor Gordon Brown. And other parties, including the Liberal Democrats, saw fresh opportunities. But Iraq and Afghanistan knocked a lot of the gloss off Tony Blair. And as new Labour faded, so the Conservatives came up with a charismatic leader of their own from a new generation, David Cameron. Technology was making a lot of difference to politics as well. There was tweeting, there was blogging, and in Britain, the first ever televised leaders debates. There is a difference, there's a real difference between us. You, you change clubs of which you are a member by getting stuck in, not standing on the sidelines and complaining about it. Well, you know who these, well guys, these two guys remind me? They remind me of my two young boys squabbling at bath time. That day here, the Sky News debate in this theatre, that was a three-person debate, Clegg, Brown, Cameron. Was that the right balance? Oh, I think so. Uh, and, 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 of course, what those debates did is they, they changed the, the language of, of the general election campaign. Um, the, the three debates um, punctuated the campaign in a way that we, we no sooner out of one debate that we were looking forward to the next and the, the whole um, political agenda became about what was said in the previous debate, what was going to be said in the next debate and the one uh, after that. And, it, and of course, as you remember, it transformed uh, the polls, uh, which swung well and truly after the first debate and prior to our debate, well and truly um, uh, in favour of, of the Little Democrats and, and well, Clegg. Mania, yeah. Yes, indeed. Sky paid for this microphone, and when we had the leaders' debate here in Bristol in 2010, it seemed entirely logical that the participants should be the leaders of the Conservatives, Labour and the Liberal Democrats. But since then, we've had the formation of the coalition, the Scottish referendum, the rise of UKIP, and to a certain extent, the Greens. So this time, five years on in 2015, the broadcasters think we need a different mix at the podiums. Elected in 2010 for Brighton Pavilion, Caroline Lucas is the first ever Green Party MP. Here we are still battling against a political system that seems to be set up deliberately to exclude new entrants to the market. You know, it ought to be a, a candidate for referral to the Monopolies and Competition Commission, frankly, because it's so difficult for new entrants to get in. But having said that, I think we can see with the, with the rise of, of UKIP um, and obviously now the uh, increasing numbers of people voting Green, there is a real frustration, I think, that people feel with the current monolith of politics. They want to break through that. There are even bigger new insurgent forces in British politics than the Greens. The SNP may have lost the independence referendum, but they run the Holyrood government under First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. Then there's UKIP, which came first in this year's European elections, and which now has two MPs in the Commons, following famous by-election victories. Douglas Carswell beat the path for UKIP, resigning his seat in Clacton as a Tory MP to immediately refight it in purple colours. I think inevitably, in, 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 in politics as in nature, uh, it, nature abhors a vacuum, so too in politics, um, uh, a, a, a party will come in and offer people choice and I think we're very lucky in this country that the party that's coming in and offering a choice is a basically free market classical liberal party. It's a desire for um, a, a customer voter focused politics that people want and I'm afraid that the, the established parties, they, they're clueless as to how to respond to it. With many old tribal loyalties already abandoned, nobody is predicting a landslide election victory for either David Cameron or Ed Miliband. Instead, how those vital few percent of votes fall here or there in the margins for UKIP, Nationalists or Greens seems likely to determine who will run Britain after the 7th of May.
Adam Bolton, Sky News, Westminster.